everybody. Welcome to Mosaic Maria. My name is Maria. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for dropping in. Happy Monday. I thought I would make a quick follow-up video. So this video content is long overdue because it really has taken a lot of deep research. And honestly, I tried to write down how I got to where I got to following where brought me rare bear but i'm going to leave every link for you in the information so this is a video that i am doing as a follow-up response to the video i made in 2015 where uh, it's called frankie and alice the movie go see it so uh I was going to wear the purple, the same purple shirt that I'm wearing in that video, um, just to kind of do a years later, what do we all think now? So as most of you know that have been visiting my channel and that are subscribed to me, I do look at all media depictions and I dig deep for truth and look at how the media uh, portrays mental health challenges, lived experiences that are told as true and made for fiction and also dramedy comedy when it is depicting multiple personality or disassociative disorders or disassociative identity disorder as well as many mental health challenges and then I cook bake have little rants about things and do cat videos <laughs> crochet and knit so that's why it's mosaic it's many things so um I want to talk about Frankie and Alice. Who is Francine Lucinda Murdoch? Is she real? Is that really her name? Who is Dr. Joseph Oswald, quote unquote, Dr. Oz, who treated uh, Francine Lucinda Murdoch? Um, what was going on at the time? What Halle Berry had to say about how she received the project? And so, gleaning from her interviews, and the, the script, really looking at the script, the time period, and then following all the things that were going on during that period and reading up on little, what I like to call little throwaway, little giveaways and throwaway lines that are put in the script. I really cannot come to a conclusion on if there was a true event that they based this on and then just filed it all under um, names, dates, and ages and places have been changed because story. So what we know from the beginning is this project, Frankie and Alice, landed in Halle Berry's lap in the 1990s. Um, in some interviews, she talks often about how her mother was a psychiatric nurse for over 35 years with veterans in a psychiatric ward working with veterans who were mentally challenged or were alcoholic. Okay, that is important to note. Uh, she also mentions that as she received this uh, information from an acquaintance, from a writer friend, before she even did Dorothy Dangerous, and she wanted this project to come to light. In some movies, she's been asked, how did you prepare for the, in some interviews, she's been asked, how did you prepare for the um, movie to get ready for the role? And she comes right out and says, by meeting the subject, by meeting Frankie and talking to her and learning of her experience. And then by being able to read some of her treat her doctor's transcripts. And what she gives credit to over and over again is that Frankie, the story of Frankie and Ellis and little genius who was with her would probably have never come to light had it not been for a very sympathetic, empathetic doctor who was willing to go outside of the scope of what doctors did during that time period and really take Frankie under her wing and dig deep, and, or his wing, I'm sorry, and dig deep and find out what's going on. Okay, so the first thing I did 
um, because so many people have come to my channel and said they can't find anything. They can't find any real Francine, Lucinda, Murdoch. They've looked under Lucinda. They've looked under Francine. They've looked under Frankie. They've changed the spelling of Murdoch. They've looked under Francine Oswald, thinking that maybe she married her doctor. Because in the end of the movie, it says Frankie went on to become a teacher with the help of genius that Dr. Oswald continued to treat Frankie until her condition became more controllable and that he died in 2001. So I, I know that the movie begins in Savannah, Georgia in 1957. I decided I'm going to sit down and read the script. And then I'm going to go back and watch the movie over and over and over again. There are little things that jump out that are kind of like throwaway giveaway things in the movie that just just information that has nothing to do with what's going on and is just overly redundant. And from the get-go, we understand that Dr. Oz what his colleagues call him, is a researcher, teacher, academic, not really doing clinical work anymore, but he ends up at a medical university hospital, staying late. He's going through a separation with his wife. He's just having a lot of love life problems. And he's really into the philosophical, how hallucinogens expand the mind, listening to music expands the mind the subconscious, um, and hypnosis. So he's an academic who's really interested in experimental psychology. And that's what he is. He's an experimental psychologist. He really doesn't belong in a mental health hospital giving diagnoses. He's surrounded by conservative, very conservative traditionalist doctors who are kind of leery of his pioneering work. So when he's doing his assessment of Frankie, and these are just points to go look at in the movie um, and the script, he goes out of his way to, when he's questioning Frankie about her drug usage, blackouts, asking her what drugs she does, if any, drinking, um, meth, um, benzos, Quaaludes. And uh, for the character Frankie says, Frankie's got rules. No smack, no blow, no speed. Um, but she does uh, do reefer. Now, she's actually very intoxicated. Um, she's smelling drunk. She's um, very drunk, but she's holding her liquor very well. The other doctors can see she has a history of going in and out of hospitals and treatment centers intoxicated. So they're dealing with alcohol with her. Some doctors think, well, maybe she's schizophrenic. Other doctors think maybe she's bipolar. But Dr. Oz, in, in that moment that Frankie says, Frankie got rules, no smack, no blow, no speed, she's talking about herself in the third person. And this is a point, a pivotal point that uh, Naomi says um, the National Institute, uh, the National Alliance for um, Mental Illness says this is a pivotal point in the movie where they're giving a hint to the doctor that Frankie is uh, referring to herself in the third person. She does this several times when she doesn't make the rent and a check bounces. She refers to her landlord and says, you know, Frankie's good for it. I'm, I'm going to make good on it. You know, Frankie's got it. When um, she's talking to her, um, um, I think what else, there's one other time she does this. I'll, I'll come, I'll circle back to it. Um, she's talking to Bobby and um, she talks about Frankie again. So there, there's three moments in the movie where she refers to herself as Frankie in the third person. Oh, so the doctor is noticing this. He's taking notes of it. Um, but it isn't until she actually switches after he mentions, have you ever disassociated? 
Um, they're using the modern terminology of disassociative identity disorder, even when multiple personality wasn't on the books during that time period. So that's very interesting. So they're trying to get the audience up to date. Um, looking at the time period of this, it would have been when Dr. Cornelia Wilbur and Florence Schreiber were coming out in Hollywood, Holly Weird, with their movie, Sybil. Um, it also would have been um, a time period uh, when Doctors Were Experiment had just gotten done experimenting with LSD experiments and were starting to experiment with celebrities. So what does Dr. Uh, Joseph Oswald um, tell us is that he was one of the first psychiatrists to drop acid and that he was involved in a landmark study, very significant study, between 1954 and 1962. And that he experimented with over 900 patients, giving them LSD. Well, Frankie is really surprised by this, and she adds in a little bit of like, you know, um, turn on, drop out, stone out, whatever, whatever that phrase is that was very popular back then. Tune in. Tune in, drop out, whatever, whatever. I'll go look it up and put it down. Well, that was a term that became very popular from Asley, Asley um, Stanley. So then she mentions you're responsible for the Grateful Dead in the movie. She makes, she, there's just these comments that just don't belong there. It's this unneeded verbiage, you think. But it's actually directing us to the real doctor that treated Frankie. So we got a mention of the Grateful Dead. We got a mention of LSD experiment investigation that went on with over 900 patients. Um, I can't get past the point that Stellan Skarsgård, who plays the doctor, is from Switzerland and that Albert Hoffman, who um, first uh, made LSD and then gave it to all these doctors to um, free, to experiment with. Um, all of them are from Sandoz Pharmaceutical in Switzerland. So that's kind of, they're kind of blaring at me all the time. So I decided to look up all the doctors and the LSD experiments. And there's where I found my answer. I don't know how I got to Dr. Oscar Janninger. I cannot tell you. I was reading about it, Rolling Stone articles about As Asley Stanley, the Grateful Dad. I was reading about the great LSD experiment of the 60s. I, I will give you all the links. Maybe you'll find it. I ended up reading about Dr. Ronald um, Stansfield. And then... Rick Strassman and uh, Dr. Cohen and uh, Abramson and Hoffman. And then I ended up reading about uh, Betty Eisner. So all these people were involved in LSD studies, common housewives, doctors, pediatricians, everyone. But when I got to a point where um, I kept seeing over and over again that Cary Grant was given LSD to experiment with over and over again. And I don't know what I cross-referenced it to. I wish I knew, but it brought me to Dr. Oscar Jenninger, psychiatrist, experimental psychiatrist, better known to his colleagues as Oz. Okay, so I'm going to leave you all the links. Um, he was a landmark pioneer doctor between 1954 and 1962, which is the exact years they use in the movie, um, who experimented with giving 900 patients two micrograms of LSD, which is exactly what he was talking about in the movie. Um, the research was scrapped. He was, he was not part of the military-led LSD. Uh, 
projects, which would have been the MK Ultra Bluebird program, which morphed into the Artichoke program. He was not involved in that. Um, unlike the other psychiatrists, he was receiving uh, from Sandoz a pharmaceutical in Switzerland and through Albert Hoffman, um, free LSD to give to all these patients. They experimented on people that were in um, sanitariums and institutionalized for forensics, criminal forensics, uh, and also incarcerated and also elderly and also regular housewives and people that just wanted to be part of the experiment. Um, but his focus was on the creative process and how it opened up and expanded your mind to create and if your perception would be different in creating. And then later there was a big pull with veterans on uh, the treatment of alcoholism and post trauma. So uh, reading up on Dr. Oscar Jenninger, who is really Dr. Oz, who is really, I don't know if in the movie they fashioned Dr. Oswald after Dr. Jenninger, or if Dr. Jenninger is really truly Dr. Oz. I don't know. Um, but I think it's worth checking into, so I'll give you all the links because going further down in looking and looking down the rabbit hole of what other experiments and trials Dr. Uh, Oscar Janiger did, um, he founded the Albert Hoffman uh, Foundation which was devoted to the man who first made LSD. So he worked very closely with him. Um, and one of his better known experiments was with a patient, was a famous artist named Frank Murdoch. Frank Murdoch was a artist who was bipolar and in late stages of alcoholism. So he had some forms of dementia and delusions and grandiosity and um, confusion and memory problems. So he met with Frank Murdoch and gave him lots of acid free from Sandoz and celebrities like Cary Grant and um, Rita. There were so many. I, I'm just going to give you the links. Um, I don't want to name everybody. But Cary Grant is pretty well known, so you you know Cary Grant. Um, poets. He was the cousin of beatnik poets. Um, what else? So I find it really strange that Frankie's name, Francine Lucinda Murdoch, um, would be under the name uh, in an experiment of the name of a doctor that was known by the name Dr. Oz to his colleagues and an endearing term that everyone that knew him and that he was doing the experiments on the 900 patients that Dr. Oswald talked about in the movie. And I just find that that's information that we don't need. Okay. The other thing that's always hypothesized, speculated about out here is if Frankie did live in Savannah, Georgia, is the Prescott family real? Um, why can't we find anything on Mr. Pete? I can't, well, I think the names were all changed. I think the places were all changed. I think it was based on true events, but everything was changed. What I can tell you right now is that Dr. Oscar Jenninger was married three times. Uh, his wife, Kathleen Delaney, passed away uh, shortly before him in February. Um, he lived to be 83 years old. Um, whoever treated Frankie, treated Frankie for many, many years. She did marry a psychiatrist. Um, she did become a teacher. Halle Berry did say she met with uh, Frankie. And that if 
the movie ended the way it did, when we talk about was the baby killed by the mother or did the baby get given away or what what happened? Why wouldn't there be a police report? Blah, 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 blah. The, the actual movie leaves the characters wondering, did the mother kill the baby? What happened to the baby? The psychiatrist wondering what happened to the baby. And that's the healing that needs to happen and the work that needs to be done that is spoken of at the end of the movie. How I know when I'm better. How will they stay? Will they go? Will, will the personality alters go away? Um, will it get better? And that's all dependent on the work she does with her mother and how willing the mother is to heal with her and go back there to that time and look at that trauma that caused that. So two things always I zoom in on, like I'm constantly zooming in on why are they giving us all this information about what is this a moment that Dr. Oswald is just bragging to a patient? It seems so unreal. Why would a doctor be going on and on? Another thing that they really show in the movie, again, is that she's becoming attracted to him and he is really involved with her, overly. So when, when they say she married a psychiatrist, I wonder, did she marry him? Um, probably not, but she could have married a good friend of his that was also involved as an experimental um, psychiatrist in all these studies um, because she would have made a perfect study for uh, LSD at the time. Um, and... The, the one part that I always am drawn to is the actual delivery of the baby. Um, they're in a hotel room. Grandma is trying to deliver her daughter's baby. Her daughter's in pain. There's a storm going on. Every The both of them are frantic. Uh, she has lost her job. And um, there's a moment when the baby is born that there's a the baby is born alive and you can definitely see that the baby is white and she's not lifting up the baby to show uh frankie the baby we can see the baby is white and blue eyed and it's, it's a little girl and that she's crying she's active and then it seems like the mom lowers the baby to clamp off the umbilical cord, and it seems as though she has trouble clamping the cord. There's a lot of debate about this. There's lotus birth, there's delaying the clamping of the cord, there's clamping the cord right away, and then there's the position of how you hold the baby, and then there's actual lotus delivery where you wait for the placenta to be delivered, and then cut the cord separates and all of that. So when to cut the cord is a big debate that goes on a lot, but there are Accidents that can happen if the cord is cut wrong and the baby can lose all blood flow and oxygen too quickly and then have like a sudden death. So we see the baby is crying, the baby is moving, and suddenly the baby's mouth goes completely still and the eyes are fixated. And that is when Felicia Richard looks very shocked and doesn't want to lift the baby to show Frankie, covers the baby up and runs out. So I believe if the baby did die, it was an accidental uh, birth delivery accident or the baby stopped breathing and she ran to get help. There may have been, if this story is in, in any way true, there may have been a plan that if the baby passed for white and looked white enough, that the Prescott family or whatever their name is would take the baby because they lost their son. So they would take the baby and take care of the baby. So that might have been a arrangement that the mom would have made with his family. So the other thing that I wanted to mention is um, in the movie, um, Frankie speaks to her doctor about if they were going to have a boy, would, his name would be Emmett. If they were going to have a little girl, it was going to be Alice. The personality that shows up in her is named Alice. 
But it seems like that personality, being that it's a bigoted, white, bigoted, southern woman, um, it seems to be the composite of everything she's heard her whole life about why white and black children can't be together, why white and black men can't be together, why you can't mix, why you can't, why you have to know your place, that she's not good enough. And that all seems to be coming from what used to be her best friend, um, her boyfriend's sister, the things she's saying, and also a lot of um, preaching and 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 scripture and and hellfire and brimstone kind of thing that would have come from her mother and knowing your place and just fear, just fear. So um, this is what I found out. Um, I will leave all the links. So for those of you that have wondered, is there a Dr. Joseph Oswald? And I have commented back. It says right there, doctor's name was Dr. Joseph Oswald. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, maybe that was her doctor's name. But what I'm coming up with was probably the doctor was Dr. Oscar Janninger. Um, and was there a Francine Murdoch? Well, I don't know, but it's strange that there's a Frank Murdoch. I'm, I have found Francine Cecile Murdoch um, survived by her husband of 45 years. The time adds up, the location adds up, but nothing else does. So if Halle Berry and the writers really wanted to keep Frankie's uh, identity anonymous, they've done a great job. Uh, but I really think I have found the doc. So um, I will link everything there and I'd love your comments. Um, I think we can continue researching this together. I'm going to give you everything that just kind of jumped out at me every time I watched the movie and every time I read the script and all the reading and writing I did, about, looked over and, and notes I took about those LSD experiments, the MK Ultra, how it infiltrated Hollywood, the psychiatrist. The network of psychiatrists that were in Hollywood then and um, Holly Weird in California. And um, yeah, so that's all I got. So um, I thought it, after everyone has given such great comment on that video, it deserved a follow up. I apologize for my lighting, it just went down and got kind of dark all of a sudden. And um, if you like this kind of content where we look at true movies, true facts, true everything, um, where movies are depicting real life situations and real life challenges and lived experiences like multiple personality, disassociative identity disorders, and uh, trauma, uh, recovery, and all, um, please go ahead and hit the the notification bells because I'll be reviewing more books and movies soon. And uh, then I also just, like I said, do knitting, crochet, baking, cooking, and the occasional rant about what's ever in the news or fashion or makeup and lots of videos of my cat and Christmas decorations and holidays. So it's a little bit of everything. I wish you all a beautiful day and thanks for uh, dropping into my channel. Thanks. Bye-bye. Happy researching.